Hi, my name is Lisa Havler. I'm the director of Carriage Works here in Redfern. And today we're marking the opening of Christian Botansky's major new work, Chance. What you can hear behind me is the key work within Chance, which is actually made up of over 25 tonnes of scaffolding. And within the work, weaves through almost like a printing press, images of Polish babies that are announcements from newspapers. So that moves sometimes slowly and sometimes quickly through the work. And every eight minutes, a bell goes off and the work stops completely and rests just on one baby. One of the things that I think is really special about this work is it makes us reflect on how, thing, how and why things happen to us within our own lives. And what Christian says about the work is that it's really about, everything is about chance. We can use religion or a whole lot of other constructs to think about what we believe in, but really things happen as a result of chance. And one of the key components of this work is counters at each end of the scaffolding, which counts how many people are born and how many people die in the world every day. And what happens at the end of the day is that you see over 200,000 people are born than die each day in the world. So that in itself is something that's quite overwhelming. The piece was made for another place at the beginning, but when I have seen this place in 3D dimension, in, uh, I thought it would be interesting to make like a long corridor because the space is so long. And also, uh, it was a factory, and the piece is like an old 20th century machine in a way, you know, uh, to print a newspaper or a little like in the modern time of Chaplin, you know, this kind of big machine, and you can't understand actually what is used. It. And uh, especially here, it becomes like a, a factory to make babies. You know, because it's uh, new babies every seven minutes or something like right, that to arrive. And it's like a stupid machine to make babies. I mean, there's always a different way to do to a piece. And I think there's a first way is what I say, something rather funny. After you can have some question about the fact that uh, uh, it was for me the beginning of the idea of why I'm what I am. I mean, uh, because I shall be totally different if my parents made love one second after. And if it is only by chance that I'm like that, or if it was my destiny to exist. I mean, uh, you have different kind of level to understand the work, and there's, I'm sure, some other levels that I, I don't know. That I, but in any case, for me, it was some kind of a question about the, between chance and destiny. But a large part of my work is about that. It looks like a film and it looks like a printer, as you say, like a factory. Yeah. And print and that idea of destiny or religion go hand in hand. You have all these babies who are at the same time similar and unique. And there are babies who are very, very young. They have two hours or three hours. And we don't know what is going to be the life of these babies. And uh, what is important for me is that they are all different, but they look the same. They are all very ugly. All the babies are always very ugly. And, uh, but after, the life are going to change the face, perhaps. Uh, you know, the, the problem of the life, they are going to change more. But at the beginning, everybody looks the same. But inside them, they are all unique. What keeps you interested in chance? Well, I, I think it's really a religious question. I mean, if you, have a, if you are a believer, you believe that there are some kind of a, a rules or some kind of, if I die tonight in cars, is because it's useful for something. I don't know for which reason it's useful, but it was right somewhere that I must to go to Sydney and die in Sydney. If you believe only in chance, it's only because the driver was drunk or something like that, you know, it's me. But I think it's easier if you believe in destinies I and mean, if you believe that everything will happen as a reason. I, I don't believe that, but I think it's easier to believe that. Yeah. And uh, my, my first uh, work about chance and destiny, I work in Berlin 
about a house who was destroyed by a bomb at the end of the war. And uh, there were three staircases, A, B, C. The staircase B received the bomb and everybody was killed, but not the people of the staircase A and not the people of the staircase C. And I try with totally ridiculous, it's impossible to understand why these people were killed and not the others, and what happened in their life before, because they were choose, in a way, to die this day. And there is no answer to that. But it's always the, the, the problem that all, all the life we have the possibility to choose a little, but most of the time we don't know what to choose, and uh, life is like that. I mean, uh, but everything is arbitrary. Not even what, how, just how we choose, but how we define the yeah, world. Yeah, everything. yeah. yeah. That means the, the big question is to know if there's some kind of a drawing of all that, or if it's not. Yeah. And uh, in my art, what I try to do is to, well, to ask questions to myself and to the others. And uh, one of my big questions is to try to understand, because I believe that everybody is unique and very important, and at the same time, everybody is going to be forget in three generations, and very, very quickly. Then we can remember the great father, but not the great great father. And on the other way, everybody is so important, and and that's something strange, you know. And, uh, and all these have no answers because all these questions can't have an answer. I have no answers, but it's. I think I never made a piece who was not a question. I really like the idea that we're very important for a short period of time. Uh, yeah. And what is very optimistic and also is present here because you have these big numbers with people who are dead in Iraq and people who are born in Iraq and you have more or less four people who die every second and six people who are born every second. And what I want to say is that uh, we are replaced. I mean in a few years it will be uh, another uh, art critic and another painter when to speak together at the same place. I mean, uh, and what is important is things go on. It's almost encouraging. Yeah, it's very encouraging, yeah. I think it's, it's something marvelous. And we are unique. It would be exa not exactly you and not exactly me, but it would be something similar. Yeah. It's kind of like a, um, a secular Buddhism where we all get reincarnated, but we're not the same person. Not the same person, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, what is beautiful also of art, that art never finish. I mean, it was possible, some people say, oh, the painting is finished. And the painting is not finished at all, the real painting, I mean. There will be somebody who is going to find something totally different and totally new with the painting. And there is never something with finish. There's always a, a door you can open somewhere. And, and in art, there's always a door you can open. What is sure if we speak about art, that uh, I was born in art at the end of the 20th century. And if I was born in art, I don't know, 20 or 30 years before, I shall be an abstract expressionist. With something strange and something difficult to accept, but it shows that we are in a time. I mean, on the same time we are somebody unique, and on the same time we are in a time. I mean, you can recognize a painting of the end of the 18th century and a painting of the beginning of the 19th century. We are in, in a precise time. There's no progression in art. Uh, to, to speak about progress in art is totally stupid. The art is not better now than it was uh, 100 years ago. But there's some kind of, it's like a river. The water is a little more far. Not better, but more far. And uh, uh, also perhaps, uh, if somebody arrive and say, uh, Boltonsky is a very good post-conceptual artist, that mean I'm a very bad artist. Somebody must arrive and say, I don't know what it is. I don't know what that means, but I'm touched. And each time you can make a, a label on a piece or an artist is very dangerous, I think. And perhaps what we call avant-garde is when you can't make a label. If you can make a label on something, it's no more avant-garde, you know. And it's one of the reasons I like best to have a show not in a museum, but in a place like here, or like in a church, because uh, in a museum, everybody knows that they are going to see art. Here, it can be an amusement for children or something like that. You know, they know you have not the liberal art on it, so it's better for me. I think maybe the question then becomes, what is the task of art? It's not to be 
Uh, it's not to be of a label, it's to re be relevant, perhaps? Uh, I, I think there's some luck, and everybody is looking for keys. And then somebody in Amazonia is looking also for keys. But for me, there's no one good key. There's a lot of keys, and perhaps there's no keys who are working to open the lock, you know. But in any case, to be human is to, lo to look for a key. And that's what I try. But I think the difference between an artist and a preacher or a preet is a preet believes that he has an answer. And we don't believe that. And there's a lot of answers. And the question is to arrive to another question. That's what was a new question. Um, now I'm going to work in uh, the desert in the north, north of Chile, with a very dry desert. It's a place where you can see the sky in a better way, because it's so dry. And there's big, big observatories there. And there's, it seems that there's millions of stars and millions of other life. And uh, what, what we are, you know, there's uh, so many possibilities of life, so many possibilities of other lives that, us, that uh, it's also a question. And I want to make a, a large piece in the desert that nobody can see because it's so far, but to, to do it. And I, I try to work in a very high place. I like it. Like the island in Japan. Like the island in Japan.